Well, hello everybody. I'm Louise Eddington, the Cosmic Owl of Cosmic Owl Astrology. And I'd like to um, offer a big welcome to new subscribers to this YouTube channel. And if you are watching and you're not subscribed, can you I, can I invite you to please subscribe below and maybe give this video a thumbs up? Somebody keeps giving me a thumbs down. I don't know why. I wish they'd tell me what's why they... Um, doing it maybe it's a vendetta I don't know it doesn't matter really um and um maybe consider you know um going and reviewing this podcast somewhere if you're listening um at another podcast provider I'd still invite you to go over and subscribe to my cosmic owl astrology um youtube channel because I'm creating other videos as well as these new and full moon podcasts okay and now I'm finished the bulk of writing my third book. I will be creating a lot more videos because my aim is to grow my YouTube channel a lot and this podcast. So diving in again, I'm Louise Eddington, astrologer, author of two books, uh, The Complete Guide to Astrology and, the Mod and Modern Astrology. And today I'm going to talk to you about the Aries full moon 2021. But before I dive into that, let me pull a card for the Aries full moon. And I actually like this full moon. I don't know if we're going to... It is a little bit discordant. There could be earthquakes and things, and I'll talk about that. But I actually think um, the potential for this lunation cycle... I'm recording this on the day of the new moon, um, the Libra new moon. The, the potential for this cycle and then moving into the eclipses is tremendous, but I'll talk more about that in a while. So, sorry, I wasn't focusing. Let's pull the card for Aries, full moon, 27 degrees Aries, with the sun at 27 degrees Libra. Oh, well, a very earthy card. We get the Prince of Discs, which, you know, the princes are always kind of fresh new beginnings. And we see he's got the bull here and he's got the, wor the world in his hands and he's naked. And pulling the wheels of his chariot are kind of coming into the centre. This is new feelings of abundance and new potential for growth and um, and achievement and a new connection with earthly matters. This is a lovely card for this new moon. And I think it is relevant because there are some earth definitely in the chart. So we'll talk more about that as we go along. So what about this full moon? The full moon is going to be on October the 20th, 2021. And it's going to be at 8.56 a.m. Mountain Time, Salt Lake City Time. So that's 7.56 a.m. Pacific, 10.56 a.m. Eastern. And that makes it 3.56 p.m. on the 20th in the UK. So universal time. So, you know, it's pretty much everywhere. I think even in Australia, it's late in the day for you. So it's on the 20th every uh, most places. So the 20th is a two. It's in October, which is a one. So we've got one and two. So we've got the masculine and the feminine coming together because the one is the divine masculine and the feminine is, uh, sorry, the two is the divine feminine in many ways. The full moon itself. Now, remember that a full moon is a, a period of fulfillment and completion and the moon is opposite the sun. So they are kind of facing off to each other. So we have the sun in Libra um, in the sign of balance and harmony facing and the sun is our core self, um, our um our, our sovereign self, if you like, and the moon is our emotional receptivity. And the moon is in Aries, the sign of I am. So this is that me, we, um, or I, 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 us, us, us 
um, polarity again, this full moon. Bear with me, I think that's just a package being delivered. I'm actually just going to pause. It was UPS, <laughs> the perils of working from home with dogs. But I apologise. Anyway, I was, as I was saying, it's a full moon is an opposition. So we've got the moon at 27 degrees, 25, um, sorry, 26 minutes of Aries, staring off to the sun over in Libra at 27, 26 of Libra. And uh, the moon at 27 degrees Aries is only just over three degrees away from Eris, Eris the shit stirrer. And Mars is at 23 degrees of Libra conjunct the sun. So um, Mars and Eris are, are staring at each other as well. Now the sun is also conjunct dwarf planet Haumea at 28 degrees of Libra so I'll talk a little bit about that as well and uh, the, this big opposition which is quite disruptive and discordant is in square to Pluto in Capricorn. Now Pluto and Eris have just um, uh, in fact on October the 9th so they're still well in orb had just had their fifth and final uh, square from Capricorn to Aries. The first time they've squared off in these signs since about 500 BC. It's been a paradigm shifting square. The two will not make a major aspect again for an awful long time. I think it's the 2040s that um, Pluto and Pluto catches up to Eris. So this, this square in the cardinal signs of Aries and Capricorn has been, has been really causing major transformation and um, discord because um, Eris is the goddess of discord. It's been shaking things up. Eris is the, as I said, she's the shit stirrer or, or she's the puller down of the white picket fence. She's the revealer of artifice. She's um, the fighter for the outsiders. She's the, uh, she's the troublemaker when she's been um, cast out and left out in the dark. So, um, you know, she's, um, she's not the kind of love and light fluffy kind of figure, Eris. But she fights for the outsiders. She fights, um, you know, to pull down the artifice of the society we're in and reveal the, the shallowness of it. And she's certainly been doing that. Whilst Pluto in Capricorn has been um, digging up the corruption and, um, and the inequities in our institutions since 2008. So, you know, there's a lot going on there. So this, this full moon really highlights that square again. So it is a discordant full moon. Mars is still combust the sun. Mars is still under the beams of the sun, only four degrees away, which means He's not only in the sign of his detriment, he's also, which means he's a little bit softer and weaker in there. He's not at his strength as he is in the sign of Aries, which he rules. But he's also burned out by the energy of the core of our solar system, the sun. And, um, you know, this is, to my mind, is softening Mars, is is bringing out the guardian Mars, the guardian of agriculture. On the new moon that we're at now, Mars has been squaring, sorry, been trining Ceres. And I did a whole video in, about Ceres on my YouTube channel. And, and the two of them really are the protectors of the harvest and the people and agriculture and what feeds and nourishes us. And if you look at their position in, in the order of the planets, we have our most personal planets, the sun, our core, then the moon on the full moon. Then we have um, the earth as well with the moon going round it. Then after the sun, we have Mercury, Venus, our, our mind and our values and our relationships. 
And then past the Earth, we have these two figures, Mars and Ceres, before the asteroid belt, and they are protectors. Mars is also a guardian. He's He is a warrior, but he's He's the kind of warrior that is protecting the inner sanctum, if you like. And Ceres is there as well. But Mars is here on this full moon, um, shaking up and saying, opposing Eris and saying, let's shake up and see me more as a protector and let's fight for equanimity and justice and the me within the we, if you like. Now, the T, it's undoubted that T, a T-square like this, you know, is uh, quite dramatic and there's going to be some discord and disruption. Uh, there could be literal earthquakes, or, but there could also be earthquakes in our financial institutions and our institutions in general. But we know that we are moving into this new paradigm and things have to be shaken up to do it. You know, and this full moon is going to be a big shake up, I think. Um, but I think this is more at a collective level, unless you have things really close to that 27, 24 to 27 degree mark of the cardinal signs, which are Aries, Cancer, Libra and Capricorn. But there's, there's more that I want to talk about, all right, on this full moon in the astrology. And then I'll go to look at the numbers in a minute. We've also got, as I mentioned, the sun is conjunct Haumea. Now, Haumea is fertility and rebirth. In, um, in she's one of the newly discovered um, dwarf planets. Now, Haumea is in Libra until November uh, 2022, when she'll dip into Scorpio and then dip back into um, Libra. She will dip into Scorpio from November 2022 until April 2023. She, is that right? Yes. So she moves very slowly, but then she will dip back into Libra to revisit this energy until, from April 2023 until September 2023, when she will enter Scorpio completely. Now, she is um, the planet of rebirth and um, fertility, as I said, and the sun and Mars are conjunct Sedna on this. I mean, sorry, I'll conjunct Haumea on this. But not only that, we've got this dance. We've got Haumea at, um, Haumea's at 28 degrees of Libra. We've also got Sedna, who's, we've got these, pla these dwarf planets at anoretic degrees or the last degrees of planets. We've also got Sedna at the um, anoretic degree of Taurus. And she is, um, got a 10,400 year orbit, but she moves into Gemini um, in June 2023 until December 2023. She spends six months, then she dips back into Taurus from December 2023 until April 2024 when she moves into Gemini for good. So we've got these two newly discovered Trend, I, it's my belief that these newly discovered outer planets are transforming our consciousness and um, are expanding our consciousness, but they're also bringing the bigger cycles of change. Now, I, I've got to do more work with Haumea, but it's um, Sedna was last in this area of the chart uh, 10,400 years ago at the end of the major ice age. So she's undoubtedly about big, big changes in um, in the planet that we live on, okay, and associated with climate change in a big way. But the fact that this full moon is in aspect to these dwarf planets and also to Kariklo, 
Cariclo is at 29 degrees of Capricorn on this uh, full moon. Cariclo is Chiron's wife. She, Chiron was the, the mentor to the gods, the wounded healer, but he was also a teacher, an herbalist, a, a real mentor to the gods. And it's my belief that Cariclo, his wife, was the same to the goddesses. She was said to be uh, the companion to Pallas Athena. I see she's called the Grace Spinner by Melanie Reinhardt, who's done some work on her. I see her as this spinner and weaver of new stories. Kareiklo was very much involved with the whole um, Pluto, um, Ceres, Saturn, Sun, Mercury conjunction back in January of 2020. She's also been involved in these this major discord that we're having now. So I'm going to say that this T-square involves Kareiklo and Halmea as well. And it's also in an uh, aspect of adjustment to uh, Sedna, okay, from the sun. And we are being asked to look at the bigger cycles here. We're being asked to uh, rebirth uh, Libra energy in this world. Mars has just started a new cycle with the sun just before to this, this full moon. A new two-year cycle starting in Libra um, whilst he was um, really kind of, um, he just had an opposition to Chiron, that healer. I feel like we're being asked to really kind of um, create this harm or being given this opportunity to create, which is a Libra word, a more equ equitable world, a more uh, balanced and harmonious world. And uh, the fact that Sedna is in Taurus, by the way, and incidentally, Uranus was uh, is in Taurus and was aspecting the new moon that was today, is 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 asking us to shake up and redefine our relationship with the physical world. So that brings me back to the card that we had. All right, yeah, we're being asked to recreate, and I I keep hammering this message, but I keep getting it. We're being asked to kind of you know reconnect with the physical world to uh, perhaps grow just a pot of tomatoes or grow our own food a little bit more and just, you know, get out in nature a bit more and get to know it and get aligned with the seasons. We're very separate and very disconnected. And all of this is asking us to shake up and create a new, initiate a new relationship, I think, with all that is other. Venus um, rules all that Libra energy and on this um, on this full moon, Venus is in Sagittarius. She is heading towards her retrograde that begins in December. And incidentally, I am offering my um, renowned Venus retrograde class. I will post a link in the YouTube links and also in the um, anchor.fm link for this podcast. Um, and in the description. So I hope you'll join me in this um, Venus retrograde class. But Venus is um, at the middle of Sagittarius. She is really stepping into her visionary energy of the future, where I'm going to shoot my arrows for um, for the future. Um, Mars rules Aries and Mars is the ruler of the full moon and he's in Libra. We've just discussed that and combust and in supposed detriment in the sign of Libra and being softened. Mars and Le and Venus are heading towards a big dance during her retrograde as well. So I hope come join me for this class. It's going to be transformational. It's a shamanic journey into the underworld a vision quest that lasts around 40 days and 40 nights into the wilderness of your soul and spirit. We do soul retrieval, we do transfiguration, we do shamanic journey work as a group that's really healing. This class has changed lives and honestly it's kind of nothing to do with me. I'm just the messenger because Venus speaks through me for this class because she it came to me in a dream. 
But I do see this full moon as being part of we're heading into that. Uh, between now, uh, the, I'm recording this on the new moon. The moon and Venus are about to meet on the south node in Sagittarius at two degrees. And that's a real shift of our values, our old beliefs around our values. And what, um, you know, what did we, what do we value? You know, are we starting to value this connection with nature and each other more and realizing that it's all about this kind of interdependence, radical interdependence, which is Libra? Are we finally getting that idea that it's all connected in many, many ways? And I'm not talking about politically, I'm talking about holistically in the world. Let's look at the numbers. Okay, 27. Oh my goodness. This is at 27 degrees. 27 is such a beautiful number. Um, 27, 9 because the two and seven makes a nine, is the spiritual altruistic leader teacher. Okay. It has amazing mean, meaning and power. Okay. It's um, the 27 is the pure hearted, idealistic, wise and benevolent teacher and leader. Com uh, 27 combines all of the most spiritual numbers Two. remember this is on a uh, two day, <laughs> this full moon, uh, seven and nine. It's a classic number of the wise elder, the one you go to in order to gain enlightening perspective about life's deepest matters. So out of all the nines, the 27 nine is the most service oriented. It's truly here to serve and be for the benefit of all. It's it's the number of the body of um, Bodhisattva, Bodhisattva, I could not say the word, and that's one who reaches deep spiritual attainments and incarnates again to help the human brothers and sisters attain, um, attain enlightenment. It's the true spiritual leader because it's the true spiritual servant, okay? It doesn't try to lead by force, but it wants the best for all, okay? So, the 27 9 is made up of the numbers 2, 7 and 9, as I said. The 2 is highly intuitive and cares deeply for people. It's receptive and transparent. It's more selfless. That's why it's generally said to be the number of the divine feminine, because it's that receptive energy. The 7 is the most profound and deep number. It sees through everything to the very core, a pure number of wisdom and truth. The seven sees into the essence of things and reveals its true structure and motivation. Nine is the vastest number, the bird's eye view. It's the number of completion and the full moon is a completion also, but it's also the number of wisdom and um, completion. The number nine can become a little bit martial and fanatic when it's over um, idealistic, but not so with the 27 nine, because the two stands solid um, and gives the nine extra softness and profound consideration and gentleness. And this makes it a true considerate wise one. OK, now this ties in to me with this num with with the energy of what I've been saying about Mars of rediscovering um, Mars as the guardian of agriculture that he was um, in Rome as well as the god of war, okay? You know, guardian is the protector and, and you know, the true meaning of many wars was protection, you know, from attack. Um, so, you know, war is not always going out and attacking people. And I think Mars in Libra is more the diplomat and the guardian. OK, so I'm very hopeful about this um, full moon, even though it's got this quite discordant and disruptive um, uh, T-square. Um, now, the um, uh, the empty leg for the T-square formed by this full moon is in Cancer and... Um, 
And of course, that's all this is tying in with the USA Pluto return. I won't go into that. But Cancer is is kind of the outlet for this T-square that's for, that's formed by this full moon. And Cancer is the sign of the family and protection and bringing it all in. Now, the, the chariot card in the tarot is the Cancer card. And even though this is the Prince of Discs, he's in his chariot. He's, and his wheels are pulling inwards, if you can see it. If if not, I'm describing it. The, the Prince of Wands in his nakedness. He's pulling all his resources in together to, to preserve and protect and rebirth, which is also cancer. So there's a lot of energy of rebirth in this full moon. I'm I'm really, you know... Even though this this energy we're in is so discordant in this time, I think I have a lot of hope about it. Now, just one more thing on the astrology. By the time we get to this full moon, um, we will have had um, Pluto stations direct today as I record this. Saturn stationing direct, Kyrieto stationing direct, Ceres is stationing retrograde. But two days before, for this full moon, both Mercury and Jupiter um, station direct. So those are two are pretty much on their direct station on this full moon, Mercury and Jupiter. Mercury at 10 degrees of um, Libra, opposing Chiron in Aries, <coughs> bringing messages of healing to my mind about this who am I within the general us and the we and what's my part for bringing this more balanced, harmonious, equitable world into existence. And then Jupiter at 22 degrees Aquarius is going to start finishing his journey in Aquarius that started last December 2020 with his conjunction with Saturn. And 22 is a master builder number. I think we're going to start seeing with with Mercury being in Libra, the um the energy of the mind, an air sign, Jupiter also being in an air sign, Aquarius energy of the mind as well. Mercury will station direct in a trine aspect to Ceres. And um, Black Moon Lilith, incidentally, our wild woman. So we've got our goddess of the grain protector of the plebeians, the people, um, you know, there's a lot of healing potential coming and supportive energy coming from that Mercury station and uh, Jupiter um, stations in, in direct, actually in a trine aspect to Mars. This is all in air, these aspects that I'm talking about. And so I think there's going to be a lot of new I, new ideas, new new inventions, new plans, new treatments, all this kind of stuff is going on. All right. So um, there's a lot of energy around that. Incidentally, Mercury is also in a quincunx to um, Pallas Athena, the problem solver. So I just see this fulfillment on this full moon as really bringing us these um, kind of spiritually enlightened ideas to um, to both teach and to serve the greater whole. I'm very, very hopeful with all of this. So. Right, let's leave you with the symbols. But before I read the symbols, please, again, subscribe to my YouTube channel. Check out my Venus um, uh, class. There's also an option to um, buy an add-on one-on-one reading. I'm just keeping the, the group class as a very um, low-priced um, group class that people can just buy as a standalone if they want a one-on-one -on -one reading to look at the Venus retrograde and, and their own Venus star points and all that in their own chart. There's an upgrade for um, a reading for a vastly discounted price off my normal um, reading price. But please check that out. OK, and come join me. But the symbols for this um, amazing full moon. 
The let's read the Sabian symbol first. The Sabian symbol is um, a large audience confronts the performer who disappointed its expectations. It says the necessity for mature preparation and self-criticism. Um, the kind of the um, he says we see here the tangible results of the situation evoked previously. Great hopes, excited expectations cannot be sustained. The last symbol um, revealed the performer's state of consciousness. In this one, uh, the performer is actually made fully aware of having promised to the many elements of his own personality, as well as perhaps to other human beings, more than he was able to deliver. The issue is how we handle this situation. In one form or another, it's an often recurring situation in the life of an individual person. The manner in which it is met determines the individual's future possibilities of development and achievement. Um, he says, overall, the individual is not alone concerned, for in a sense, mankind as a whole will be affected. What is required is an objective inclusiveness of the whole environment, as thus a sense of responsibility for what one's actions will produce in people who have been made to expect significant results. So to my mind, this is, uh, you know, the, this toxic individuality that we have uh, developed in our Western society that abdicates all responsibility. I'm talking kind of about the extreme kind of libertarian mindset of, you know, well, I'm the only one responsible for me and I'm not responsible for anybody else at all. Whilst Libra clearly tells us that we're all in this together. OK, so we cannot we do not exist alone. We have responsibility for how our actions affect others. Now, this is not in an unhealthy, codependent way. This is just in an awareness of how we tread on the earth. So, you know, that Sabian symbol is speaking to something I've been speaking about for a long time. Now, the, um, the, the um, Chandra symbol is a wreath of laurel placed on the head of an old person. The soul's journey is absolutely endless and you sense throughout that journey that somebody is watching. The greater dynamic is at work here and you live into that ultimate aspect from the very beginning. You simply know that your destiny must and will be fulfilled. There is a higher vibrational inside track that accompanies each step, every phase and that otherness gives you back yourself in such a fashion that you are never alone, not incomplete, never less than whole. All of the vital agitations only serve to quicken the pace, to bring you back on the spiral to that vital place again where you are known and acknowledged and from which you can go forth and know and acknowledge others in their destiny light seen and sensed and known, free of all qualifications. This has a real air, this whole lunation of a rebirth of acceptance of, you know, that we're all in it together, no matter what others um, believe or do, you know, um, this is like we have to move forward together and have responsibility for how our actions affect the whole. So to my mind, it's it's a tough f full moon. It's got some very discordant, tough energies that will need to be lent into. But the powerful transformation potential is huge. So step into it and lean in, my loves. So again, don't forget to subscribe. Check in on my Venus class. And I love you all. Until next time.